Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how you can make your own Android application for free. To start making our app, we're going to start by creating a new folder, which I'm just going to call my app. Within our my app folder, we can create two more folders. We're going to call these www and res. I'll go into a little more detail about what these folders are in just a bit. Once you've got this folder created, I'm going to go ahead and open up VS Code. And um, I've got Google Chrome open as well, just so we can see our HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in real time. Um, in VS Code, I'm just going to open up our My App folder. And um, we're going to start by creating some important files. So within our www folder, I'm going to create um, our HTML file. I'm going to be using the same HTML file for the CSS and the JavaScript, but it's important that you call this file index.html because when we're converting it into an app, um, the app needs to know which HTML file it has to open up first. Then within the my app folder, I'm going to create two more files. The first of which is called config.xml. And um, I'm also going to create the voltbuilder.json file. Now I'll go into a little more detail about what the config.xml file is and what the voltbuilder.json file is and what they do in your app towards the end of the video when we're converting it into an APK file. We can start our programming now. I'm not going to get into detail about how I made this MP3 player app, but if you'd like more information, you can find another video on my channel. But yeah, here you can just see that I'm testing out the live server and now I'll get to working on the actual app itself. Um, if you want more information about the app or you just want to see the code, you can find the links to the code in the description and you can find the links to all the files necessary to make your own app in the description as well. But um, if you'd like to know more about how you can make your uh, own MP3 player with HTML, CSS and JavaScript, then you can find that video in the description. Once we've got our code all worked out, we can start working on the config.xml file. What this config.xml file really does is it just gives your app a name and it gives it the version number and the author name, etc. So in the future, if you ever want to post this app on like the Play Store or the Apple Store, then you need to have all this information as well. So you can just follow along with uh, what I'm doing in my app. And I'll also include a link to a more detailed description of what the XML file can contain in the description. So we can start by opening up the bracket and we'll have a question mark XML uh, space version is equal to 1.0 since this is the first iteration of our app and the encoding is UTF-8. Now this is just something standard and you will probably keep this the same as well. Um, we can go ahead and close that tag uh, with a question mark before it as well. Again, this is just XML syntax and then go ahead and open up the widget, uh, the widget tag under which we'll have the Android version code and the ID for our app. Now, how you can name your ID is typically it'll be com.yourcompany.yourappname. In my case, I named it com.ibuildthings.mp3 player. And this is the first version of our MP3 player. So I'm just going to be naming it as version 1.0.0. Um, then we'll have the XMLNS tag. And this is something that'll just remain standard when we convert our app in, or when we convert our files into an APK, this is something that will be referred to, which is why it's necessary for you to keep this the same. Um, once we're done with the XML, with the widget tag, um, we can go ahead and give our app its name. In my case, I'm just calling it the MP3 player. We can give it a short description and um, we can provide some author credentials. In my case, I'll just put I build things. In the video I've included in the description, you will be able to see how to give your website or your email address as well. Um, now we're going to add preferences for our app. Since our app is really simple, I have only one preference and that is that I'd like my app to be uh, constantly in the portrait mode um, because that's how I've designed it. But if you're designing a more complicated app, you may want to be able to swap between the two. And uh, if you leave this preference blank or you don't include it, then usually it'll go back to the default and it'll just let you swap between the two based on how the screen is oriented. Once we finish, we can go ahead and edit our voltbuilder.json file. 
Now, since this is just um, an app that I created and I'd have no intention of posting it to the Play Store, uh, we just have two um, keys in our JSON file in our case, that's platform and release. Um, it's important that your release stays debug because um, the service we'll be using later won't allow you to um, make a publishable application for free. You may have to pay for that, but in our case, we don't want that. So we're just going to make it as a debug release and we're only designing this for Android. Um, if you wanted to design for Apple, then you'd need some uh, special keys to post to the App Store, etc. And that just gets a little complicated. So we're just going to be setting this up for Android. And um, once you've got those two done, just make sure you've got all the right syntax, the right commas. Again, you can find these files in the description. We can close out of our VS code um, and we can go ahead and try to see how we can convert our app into a, our file into an APK. Um, an APK is just a way for Android to um, understand that it's an application. So it's just a way for Android to download your application. And um, earlier, everyone was using Adobe PhoneGap build, but um, with the introduction um, of PWAs, Adobe no longer supports PhoneGap, which makes it a lot harder for us to convert these um, HTML and CSS and JavaScript files into APK files. Um, until I came across this service called Volt Builder, and now you'll see why we named our file voltbuilder.json. And it's practically the same thing as Adobe PhoneGap, and it, it'll allow you to convert your HTML, CSS, JavaScript files all into one single APK file. And um, because of this conversion, there are some constraints, like you'll need to have your first file labeled index.html, and you'll have your specific file structure with www and uh, res, etc. But um, yeah, so since we can no longer use PhoneGap, we'll continue to use Volt Builder. For our purposes, it's almost exactly the same. Unfortunately, Volt Builder is a paid service. If your apps have to be larger than 10 megabytes, in my case, I have only one audio and one HTML file. So my app is only about six megabytes. So it's really easy for me to use. So we're going to just go ahead and open up Volt Builder, uh, uh, Volt Builder's website, which is volt.build. And you can see some of the plans they offer in case you want to purchase a plan and you want to make a more professional application, which will be slightly larger. Uh, if you want to post it to the Play Store or the Apple App Store, then you can do that through Volt Builder as well. But we're just going to go ahead and use the free service. So what you're going to want to do is go to the login slash sign up button up top. And once you click on it, it should take you to a page like this. I'm going to go ahead and sign in with my Gmail account or my Google account. You can go ahead and sign in with GitHub if you like. Once you're done signing in, you'll see a page like this and it'll show you that you're signed in in the top corner. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and go to the upload page. We're going to be building for Android since that's what we can build with the free service. Um, but before we can do that, we need to convert our app into a zipped file for it to be uploaded to Volt Builder. So how we're going to do that, I'm using a MacBook. So I'm just going to right click and hit compress my app. Once you're able to compress your folder into a zip file, you're ready to upload it to Volt Builder. I'm going to go ahead and select Android, go to my desktop and upload the zipped file. Um, once you've done this, you really have nothing else to do from here on. It'll convert the application itself. This may take a bit of time, but you really don't have to do anything. You can just sit back, relax, um, wait for Volt Builder to do its thing. Um, and once you're done, you should be seeing a screen like this. You'll see a QR code pop up with an option for you to download. Um, this, when, if you click on the download option, it'll download an APK file. Um, that's exactly what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to download this APK file and I'm going to send it to my phone. I'm going to uh, open it up on my phone. It's pretty straightforward. Um, Android does not allow you to install APK files by default. So you may have to uh, allow some services to, um, to open up and install your APK file. Um, typically, I would not recommend this, 
because uh, people may be able to install uh, viruses or other malware onto your phone through APK files. On my phone, I downloaded and I ran the APK file. I gave the required permissions. Since this is an app that we've made and we know it's free of malware, you're safe to go ahead and run it. Now you can see we've got our app all ready and open up here. I know it's nothing great, but this is just a demonstration. You can make it as elaborate, as fancy as you'd like. Um, and as you can see, our app works just as expected. It works really well. It plays the song. Um, we can use the play the button, the pause button, the reset button. And yeah, you've now got a fully functioning Android application. So congratulations, Arunodo. And thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around. And let me know if there's anything else you need help with in the comments or you have some ideas. I'll be ha very, very happy to read them all.